Euzubillah mineşşeytan recim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Biz dur. Medevi sayı bu sayı. Şerbe tekrürüz ya Rabbim. ask permission from our Sheikh to speak. We are not Ahli Bidat that is making things up. To say we are asking directly from Allah. Allah sent the prophets and the prophets sent the waris, the inheritors to us. If you want to reach to La ilaha illallah, first you have to walk in the way of the prophet, Muhammad Rasulullah. Without Muhammad Rasulullah, you will not know La ilaha illallah. Or you make up your own La ilaha illallah. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created everything for the sake of that holy prophet. And all knowledges that Allah created is also for him. He came 1400 years ago. And for 23 years, he taught and he trained those ones who were the worst, those ones who were burying their children, those ones who were committing tyranny, to the poor, to the orphans, to those who are less fortunate than them, those ones when they found wealth suddenly pouring in because everyone is coming to the Kaaba and they are using the Hajj by putting up idols all around the Kaaba so that everyone comes to make a business. Don't forget one of the reasons why they're not accepting La ilaha illallah is they say we're going to lose our business. One God, we have over 360 gods. So if you're going to take all and leave only one, who's going to come? How are we going to keep up with this? lifestyle that we have made for ourselves. Holy Prophet ﷺ transformed those ones into the best after the Prophets. And their names are written in golden alphabets until Judgment Day and beyond. These are the companions of the Prophets. These are the ones who have sacrificed their lives, their children's lives, their parents' lives, their wealth, their families, their connections, their friends, their loved ones, their security, their peace, everything. None of them said we sacrifice all this to follow Allah. The problem, even the mushriks at that time, they say we believe in Allah. But we need all these other ones too. We believe in Allah, but we need so many other ones. One time, they made a deal with the Prophet ﷺ, that later fitna entered into the history of Islam. That time, and in the Ahir Zaman and the Shaitanic people, the Jalik people take that fitna to spread more fitna. 
saying, Holy Prophet wasalam, he heard wrongly instead of hearing from Jibrail salam, he heard from Shaitan. So you say he was influenced. Satanic verses. So the mushriks say, okay, we believe in Allah, but at least keep the daughters of Allah. Keep certain ones to keep everyone happy. Yeah. And what did Holy Prophet say to them? So many today's Muslims, they say it's okay. Let's compromise. We make more interfaith. We believe in what you believe. You believe in what we believe. Your religion is my religion. And my religion is your religion. Isn't that what so many groups they are doing? Interfaith. Equal. Allah is saying the complete opposite. And they are doing the opposite. Why we are reciting Surat Al-Kafirun? Every single day. Because your ummah within Islam, we have copied the lifestyles of the unbelievers. We have followed the shaitan. We have listened to the shaitanic whisperings and we have followed it. Don't think it was only in the first Jahiliya that the Kaaba was turned into a business place. Isn't it what is turning right now? And they surrounding the Kaaba with so many idols. Oh, they're not idols. What is an idol? You like, you admire, you follow, you spend so much time. The ilah. They're surrounding the Kaaba now with shopping malls. Isn't it? With that big shaitanic clock tower that now instead of staring at the Kaaba, it is worship just to look at the Kaaba. Worship. Like it is worship just to look at the ayat of the Quran. You don't have to know. Just looking at it, it is worship. You get the rahmat, you get the nur, you get the blessings. The Muslims now, instead of looking at the Kaaba, they're looking at the big the Jalik Nimrut power of the clock. So many, so happy. MashaAllah, they saying, we've made progress. More curse falling to those ones. And those ones who are going for the Hajj and for the Umrah, and they're staying in high class hotels, tall, so high, surrounding, staying in those Ilah towers, and looking down to the Kaaba. The Kaaba is at their feet. Don't think they're going there to collect blessings. More curse is coming. The Sahabi Kiram, they gave up everything. They sacrificed everything for the Holy Prophet. And the Holy Prophet described them as the best of the Ummat. The best that has ever been created other than the Prophets. Yeah. So, our original question, our brother asked, hmm? how are we going to improve our Adab? First, we're asking permission from our sahib, sahib al sahib from our sheikh, that great friend of Allah, for support to speak. Just as the sahib kiram they ask the Prophet support to speak and to do anything. The protocol still continues today. If we are asking help from those ones who are close to Allah, 
Allah will send us the help. Allah is saying in the Holy Quran, seek means to come close to me. Find ways to come close to me. In so many ayats, Allah is saying, if they only obeyed Allah and His Prophet, obey Allah and His Prophet. Allah and His Prophet, you must obey. Allah and His Prophet. Always Allah and His Prophet, and for 1300 years, no Muslims have any issue with that. Because Prophet is representing Allah. In 1400 years, never any Muslims worship the Prophet. But today, square-head Muslims, with their lifestyles following the Kafirs, they think they know better, and they say that is a shirk. To ask help from the Prophets, from the Holy Ones, that is a shirk. The shirk is going to fall on top of their heads. So they destroyed everything in Mecca because they say it is shirk. They destroyed the graves of the noble companions of the Ahlul Bayt in the Jahat al Baqi because Muslims were going there asking for their shafaat. And Prophet is saying, I am the arch intercessor. I am the biggest Shafat. Prophets are going to ask me for Shafat. Why you don't say that time? And the Prophets they making shirk? Why they don't ask directly from Allah? And Allah is saying in so many ayats, if only they had asked you to pray for them, to forgive them, you would find Allah answering that prayer. Adab. That is an adab. Adab, it is the spirit of the dargah. Why in the dargahs we have adab yahu, adab yahu, adab yahu everywhere? It is not knowledge, it is adab. Adab is knowing your limits, knowing where you are. Where your Lord is. Shaitan had so much worship. He had so much knowledge. But he lost his manners. He lost his adab. He had so many deeds that he did. None of us can do. He did not leave a single space on the face of this earth. That he did not put his forehead down to make sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he lost his manners. How man can stop that? That is just shaitan making you to do that. How man can lose his manners? Instead of asking how to improve our manners, which we don't have manners these days anyway. Manners is not just to put your hand to your heart and to walk backwards. That's not manners. Manners is knowing your limits. Manners is submission. Manners is obedience. Manners, it is knowing where your knowledge ends and where you have to go to get more knowledge. Manners is knowing yourself than knowing your Lord. But ask ourselves, what are the things that's stopping for us from having manners? That is key. What is it that's stopping us from having manners? Holy Prophet is saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my teacher and he taught me the most beautiful manners. So the manners that we should be emulating imitating, following, are the manners of the Holy Prophet that he has shown 1400 years and those ones who are walking in his footsteps, they have carried those manners. Those manners cannot be contained in books. Those manners are taught from heart to heart and it is a living tradition. It is not published. It is not sold in Barnes and Nobles is not sold online. 
It is never. It is going to be for money. Surround yourselves with people who have manners. Surround yourselves with the shaykhs and the awliya Allah who are real and they are following the way of the Prophet. If they have prophetic manners, they have manners. What is stopping us? One is disobedience. We don't want to follow anyone. I know myself. I'm following myself. I will not bow down to someone who has higher knowledge than me. Majority of the Muslims now, believe me, when Mahdi alayhi salam comes and says, now you must give bayat to me, majority, they are going to refuse. They are going to say, who are you? We have to give bayat to you. You think obedience and submission is just going to happen overnight? If you are not trained and you did not understand what bayat is, you think that time when it comes, you are going to do it? Islam is not magic. And when Isa alayhi salam comes, yes, there will be Christians who will leave their foolishness and they will come to haq, to truth. But there will also be Muslims who says, why we have to follow a leader? Why we have to follow a guide? Isn't that what is happening now? Are we supposed to follow directly Allah? So disaster. Disaster that time. And we see what the disaster is happening now. You don't have to be a saint or a scholar to know this. Because what is the Shah going to teach you about manners? What is the Shah going to teach you about your worship? He's going to teach you what, how to remove the veils between you and your Lord. What is it that's stopping you from achieving the manners of the prophets and the saints? They are going to say, look at yourself. Understand the enemies that are inside of you. That is putting up those veils between you and your Lord and remove them. No one has the ability to remove them except for you. They are going to teach you what your anger is. So many, majority, everyone is angry these days. They have everything. They are being provided with everything. They are angry. Angry in reality is angry to Allah. Because a believer will not be angry for himself. He is going to be accepting. He is going to understand. He is going to look at the wisdom behind it. When do you have the right to be angry? If you are angry for the sake of Allah. You are angry because haq is being covered. And even then, first you are going to look at yourself. You are going to see how I covered this haq in myself. Then he is going to look at those ones that are following, that he is following. He is going to look at the jamaat. And he's going to say, we must go according to this, not by themselves. The Shaykh is going to tell you, the anger is stopping you from having manners. And this anger has so many thousands of divisions. Never ending. The Shaykh is going to show you the arrogance that you have. And you think, I don't have arrogance. I'm okay. But you cannot see yourself. And he's going to show you, he's going to refine, he's going to take away every speck of dirt, at least he's going to let you to see. Jealousy and your stubbornness. Hundreds and thousands of branches coming out from these four enemies. If you are starting on this journey and you're knocking yourself wall to wall, you're looking at yourself, where is my stubbornness today? Where is my jealousy today? Where is my anger today? 
Where is my stubbornness? What I did today? Ya Rabbi, forgive me. And I make intention to become better. And you are looking and you are trying to fix yourself. That time, that one, he has manners. Because he's always fixing himself. He's getting better. Because he's always fixing himself. He's not going to be stubborn. So many, they are stubborn. Their stubbornness is stopping them. Maybe they are not so angry people. They are not so arrogant people. But the stubbornness stops them. Get rid of it. This is the Jihadul Akbar. This is the biggest jihad. The small jihad is what we do physically to pull the sword and to fight in the name of the Khalifa for the sake of Allah and His Prophet. There is no Khalifa, there is no call for jihad now. But the bigger jihad, the Jihadul Akbar, continues. Ask yourself, really, am I fighting with myself today? Am I really fighting the Jihad al-Akbar today? Or am I letting everything to go as I like, as my ego likes? You will come to an answer that time. These words are for you and for me. Inshallah Rahman. If there is benefit in it, which there is, take it. If you don't like it, leave it. You take it, you'll win for yourself. Because we are saying we are in tariqat, but it is a joke. We are in the tariqat, in the way of the Prophet, but so many people, they are taking it as a joke. It is not a game. We should not let it to become a game. Understand, Holy Prophet والسلام, he did not come to the battle of Badr saying, I am Habibullah, I can do so many miracles, my Sahabis can do so many miracles, I'm guaranteed we are going to be successful. He did not. But so many Muslims, they're going out to face the shaitans and say, so what? I just say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, everything is going to go away. I'm just going to say, Madad, everything is going to go away. But they are not taking precaution. They are not submitting. Let me tell you about the Battle of Badr. Don't think that when the Sahabi Kiram, the Muhajirun and the Ansar, under the leadership of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, when they heard that the Mushriks, they are coming to attack them, don't think suddenly everyone just got together, they start planning what to do and everything. They did not. Holy Prophet ﷺ heard that news was coming. And he heard that they are going to come to attack. Not just to attack, to finish. To finish the Prophet. To finish the Muslims. To finish Islam. That for how many years in Mecca? Hmm? 13 years in Mecca. None of the Sahabi Kiram took out even a small knife, a knife to defend themselves against the Mushriks who were torturing, making them to suffer, humiliating them, taking away their rights and everything. They did not defend themselves. Thirteen years. Don't think that they are different from us. They are meat and bones like us too. They have children. They have parents, they have friends, they have loved ones, they have aspirations. But when they met the Holy Prophet ﷺ, everything fell away. They say, you, only you, Ya Rasulullah, because you are bringing us to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they submitted themselves to the Prophet. They did not complain. Thirteen years is not thirteen months, it is not thirteen days. If we are tested that same way, we're saying we are tariqat, huh? following in the footsteps, stop that. That is another thing from shaitan. 
See, man is not looking at himself in the mirror, he's not going to see. Shaitan is locked up, but is by remote control, is ordering and is controlling so many people. So you see, even during Ramadan time, they still become shaitanic. Why is that? Hmm. Because shaitan trained your ego good. He says, now I'm going to go, and the ego is going to take over. So you see people, they're still continuing. Some, they get worse in the Ramadan. Because the ego wants to prove to, I can do a better job than shaitan. Sahabe Kiram, they were people like you and me. They feel pain, they feel hunger. But they submitted themselves to the Holy Prophet. And while their children are being killed, their parents are being tortured, they're going through hunger, they did not go to the Prophet to complain. To say, what kind of religion is this? What kind of way? What kind of spirituality is this? You say, Allah is most merciful. Why is not helping us? Did you ever read something like that? Tell me if you did. Tell me this is not submission. You think they were submitting themselves to Allah? Allah sent the Prophet. Yes. Through submission of the Prophet, they submitted to Allah. They went through all the most severe hardship. Allah was testing them. They did not have a drop of doubt or complaining in their hearts against their Prophet. They say, Samina wa ta'na. We hear and we obey and we follow you. We follow you. Understand, old woman, eh? she was following Holy Prophet Just because of that, they were not doing anything. Nothing. They just say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And that old lady, they tie her leg to one camel, and they tie the leg to another camel, and they rip her apart. Because she says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those ones, they were martyred so that we can say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Easy. Are we even thinking about them and thanking them? Or are Muslims busy with dunya and their own small little problems that they make to themselves? Or thinking they're so high level, we don't have to do this. We're looking at illusions and delusions and maqams now. Whole family, they are being boiled alive because they believe in the Prophet. So many of them like that. They did not leave the Prophet. Thirteen years, they did not defend, they obeyed. So when they came to Medina, and they heard they were coming, the mushriks are coming to destroy them, don't think that they ran to the provinces, what are we going to do now, we have to, no. They looked to the Prophet, they said to Islam, Prophet is not saying anything, they submitted. They have already submitted for thirteen years there. And Prophet is saying, we will not move until Allah gives us the permission to move. Until Allah gives me an order, I will not move. Some ones, especially from the Ansar, they're not able to understand so much. They did not go through what the Muhajirs, they went through. They helped a lot, yes, but they did not go through the same way. They were not trained in the same way. And they say, what is going to happen if they come and they attack us? Prophet is saying, then we will be shahids. We will be martyrs. We will not lift one finger 
unless Allah gives us the order. Understand that. This is not a game. This is not just love that so many people, I love Shem Mawlana, I love Shem Abdul Karim, I love, I love, I love. But we are seeing they cannot endure any little pain that comes to them. What kind of love is this? Now compare ourselves to the Sahabi Kiram, hang down our heads and say, Astaghfirullah alazim wa And when the order came, Holy Prophet is saying, Allah is saying, now take your swords and strike. But know it is Allah that is taking the life, not you. And they were so happy. They were so happy, not because for revenge they were happy. Which so many people, they are being patient because they are waiting for the day that they can take revenge. They were happy. Because Allah gave them an order. Allah communicated with them. Allah spoke to them. And it is their chance now to make Allah happy. They had only two horses. They only have a few swords. So many of them, they just took sticks. They took stones. They took anything that was around. They didn't have armor. They didn't have the technology that the Mushriks had at that time. But what did they have? They have a full heart. They had a love and they have a submission and they're willing to die. They went into that war not to say we're going to come out to become victorious and we're going to win. No. They went there to say now is our chance to die for the sake of Allah and His Prophet, to prove, to prove our submission. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. He said, we promise you 3,000 angels. He sent down 2,000 to help them. That the mushriks, even the mushriks, they saw that this is not normal people who came on horses. That these were angels. If we are remembering these warriors of Badr, all 313 of them, and offering our respects, maybe some Fatihas for them. But no one is thinking. Why are you thinking? You're not even giving Fatiha for your father. So many years. Not even reading one Yasin. Until Sheriff Andy say to you, then, oh, okay. Because that battle will continue. The battle of Badr ended, yes. That was the first battle and the last battle of the Alling. And the thousand angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised for the battle of Badr is going to come in the last battle against the Dajjal. So now, We should prepare ourselves. Not to say, I'm this or I'm that, but look to the Sahabi Kiram and the Battle of Badr and look where we are. Those who are working on their obedience, they're working on their obedience, they're increasing their obedience and their submission. Then we are preparing ourselves for that battle, for that fight. If we are not, and we are still in the illusion and delusion world, then most likely that jewel is just going to pick us up just like that. May Allah protect us. May Allah keep us on the Sirat al Mustaqim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to step on our ego and to remove the veils between us and Him become obedient servants. We are for our Shaykh. We are not for anyone else. May Allah raise the station higher and higher. al Fatih. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
anyone has any questions, ask. Nothing since the beginning. I don't want to spoil your mood, too, so I'm not saying it. Nothing. You're not checking, isn't it? I'm giving signal sleeping. Subhanallah. So difficult. Thank you. Mashallah. Yeah, say. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How do we know that we are on the right track and that our Shaykh is pleased with us? Sit down somewhere. Ask yourself that question. Don't ask me. Ask yourself. Be sincere. Ask yourself, what did I do today for the sake of my Shaykh? You can come up with the answer, isn't it? This is not mysticism. What did I do today that if Sheriff Fendi was there with me the whole day that he's going to be happy with me? I spoke these words to this person. Is he going to be happy with me? I did this. I thought this. I read this. I did so many things. If he is there, which he is, will he be happy with me? then you'll be able to come up with the answers straight away, right away, if you are sincere, if you are honest. That's why tafakkur is very important in our way. Meditation, not meditation to enter into illusion world, seeing lights here, seeing angels here, seeing prophets here, no. To look at our enemies, to look at the veils, to look at all the wrong characteristics that we have and to say, did I do this today? Did I do that today? I did this, I did this, I did this. I didn't do this, alhamdulillah. I did this tomorrow making intention not to do it. This one I have it, I did it less today. This one I did it more. That is tafakkur. You do that, it is better than worshipping continuously nafila ibadat for 70 years. But people, they want short-cut magic formulas. Just give me a salawat. What's all this talk about? You know, for me to control my anger. Just give me some dua. I can just recite just like that and it's going to take away everything. Subhanallah. Is that what Prophet did? He could have just done magic too, just like that. Didn't he? You think he did not have the power now to change the whole unbelievers to become believers too? You think he could not just change everything and win every situation? So, why we are getting stuck with this? Those duas, are they going to help? They are going to help if you take one step. You take one step, Allah is going to take ten steps to you. But you're sitting there on your... Mm, and you say, come to me, help me. You're not doing anything. And we are saying, this is what you're going to do. That one step that you're going to make also, higher faith that you have, you're going to say, you teach me how to make that one step. Don't let my ego to tell me how to make that one step. Because according to my ego, me sitting down like this, opening my hand like this, this is already taking one step. Is that taking one step? No. It's not. So, if you are making tafakur, if you are sitting down and asking, answer will come to you straight away. Where did I deviate from the Siratul Mustaqim today? Where did I stay? The more sincere, the more honest you are, without anyone telling you. Now it's between you and Allah. Everybody wants to be just between you and Allah. Now sit down and be sincere. No one is looking at you. No one is yelling at you. No one is praising you. Be sincere with your Lord. But how are we going to be sincere if we are not taught how to be sincere? So hang out with the sincere people. Follow the sincere one. And they're going to tell you how to be sincere because everything is messed up. 
There are so many tricks and traps of your ego that you made to be so confusing, you have to put everything out. That's why being in Jamaat, it is important. You learn, you see, you understand. Everything that is happening, it has a lesson for you. If the Shaykh is washing up one person, you must think that that is me. Not to say that's not me. I escaped from it. If the Shaykh is correcting another person, you must say, I have that characteristic. Are we? I did. This is just a lesson. You think that's easy? No, it's not. Of course, that time you feel like you just want to rip yourself to pieces. Then you're going somewhere. Uh, people point fingers to others, cheating, slandering, lying. And they're not looking at their own dirtiness. You do that, then that time you don't have to wait. The Shah doesn't have to wash you up too. He gives you one look and you know. Straight away it comes to your heart and you know. Not the Shah yelling and screaming at you. You still say, I don't understand. I still don't understand. I don't understand. What are you talking about? I don't understand. It will show. It will show in your work. It will show in your attitude. That you're always saying, I must make better today. I must become better today. I did my work. Today, it must be better. Where it can be improved, that. You're looking at your prayers. Where it can be improved, that. You're looking at your zikr. Where it can be improved. You're always looking for ways to improve yourself. Because you're looking at how deficient you are. If you're always looking for ways to improve yourself, then definitely you're going to stay in Sirat al -Mustakim. That time, yes, your heart starts to work. And your work will show that it is improving. And when someone tells you your work is no good, you're not going to jump to fight. If someone says you're not thinking through enough, you're not going to jump to argue. When someone is saying you're being stubborn and you're being arrogant, you're not going to be resisting. You're going to say, that's right. That is where it's stopping me. Thank you. That's good. This is where... I lack, and this is where I must fix myself. That time you can be sincere. You sit down, and answer will come straight away to you. Spoiled 21st century Muslims means murids. Everyone thinks they are awliya. Be careful. We should be busy with things that concerns us. This is very important, and it concerns us. So many other things it doesn't. I'm looking in the Facebook to what people are talking about. All those ones, don't tell, I'm telling you, yeah, everyone is quoting from Hadith, of course. Everyone is speaking about awliya, this and that. Yes, everything is religious, everything is Islamic. But I'm looking, what is it that they are being busy with? Even in Islam, so many involve themselves in Malayani knowledge that does not concern them. Inshallah Rahman. May we have more sincerity. Uh, then that time, it's very easy for us. That time, yes, you have a connection to the heart. Because you're always watching when you do something wrong to say, I did. When you do something, you're always looking, what I could have done better? What is the wrong thing? What is the wrong thing? Always there's room for improvement. And you will always improve. That time the voice will come very loud and clear to you. You need to do this. You need to do this. Inshallah Rahman. May Allah raise the station of our Shaykh higher. May we become better. Fatiha. Go answer the phone. You hear it ringing. Eh? Ghaflan. MashaAllah. Listening to Sohbat, applying it to your lives. That's why you're so alert and doing the work, everyone. I'm just speaking. They're sitting in front. No understanding. Continuously there. I don't know if anyone noticed. 10, 15 minutes now. Half an hour. I'm sitting and I have to think and I have to be born. Inshallah, one day we will learn.
wake up before it's too late. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes? Fix it. Alhamdulillah, this time I had three seconds. Just three seconds. That's Maybe this time is going to be longer. Looking at both of you, lolo. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm speaking. I'm making so many signs. I'm making so many signs. Nothing. I'm saying nothing. 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 Because you are not following. You're not following. You're not looking. You're not being interested in what is happening. It's not about you. Yeah? It's not about you. It's not about me too. But I have to receive something. And so many times, you guys that are supposed to help me, you're cutting it. And I have to sit and I have to be patient because it's not coming or it's being cut, it's being interrupted. I have an obligation. This is my work. Saying, 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 not listening. Allah, listen one day. Say. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What are the signs of submission? I have love for you. Problem with you. Because this didn't happen today. Months it's been happening. Simple thing. Very funny because it doesn't happen to you. It's not interfering your work. My work is interfering. But you're not running to fix it because it's not interfering to your work. If it interferes into your work, if they cannot hear you, or something happens to you, you're going to run to fix it. This is, eh, so what? Hoja is just, just wants to see. Say. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What are the signs of submission? I have love for you, but feel that it is insufficient. Please give us advice. We don't give advice. Prophets to give advice. The sheikhs, they give sohbet, I'm not a sheikh. So we have talk. We speak. I speak and I listen. Nobody wants to listen, it's okay with me too. I speak and I listen. It's enough. Start with that, the love. Start with the love. The love is going to guide you to submission. Slowly. You don't have to submit to me. I'm not asking anyone to love me or to submit to me, only to our share. He just happened to leave me here. So we have to start somewhere. How are you going to have submission? How are we going to have submission to our share? Tarikat and Sohbat wal Harif al Jamia. This tarikat it is based on Sohbat. And goodness comes from the Sohbat. Sohbat is a jamaat. How are you going to have submission? Take the sohbat of our sheikh. Listen. Obey. Put it in our lives. Apply it. Look at the results. I'm not asking anyone to love me too. I do that then your love to your sheikh will definitely increase. Then that time you're going to start asking yourself questions. You must always ask yourself questions. Any question? No question, because you're not asking yourself questions. What did I do for the sake of Allah today? That is a question that every Ottoman, every Turk, they used to have. They hang it in front of their houses, and their doorway to go in and out. So they ask themselves that question. What did I do for the sake of Allah today? Simple. 
You don't have to memorize hadith or ayats. Oh, just because that is coming from hadith and ayat, of course. But one thing that you're taking sincerely and you're putting in your life, you're going to get more benefit than just memorizing things without putting it in your heart like a donkey that's carrying books. Never is going to become a scholar. You're saying, what did I do for the sake of Allah today? You sit down and say, what did I do? Well, I woke up, I went to work. Really, for the sake of Allah, you went to work? Or you went to work for the sake of your family, to make my, more money? You say, for the sake of Allah, what did you do for the sake of Allah? The money that you earn, how you are giving it for the sake of Allah? I went and I hung out with people. How many words of Allah or the Prophet did you speak? What are the manners of the Prophet did you show to people? Malayani. Or just doing it for the nafs. You're going to ask yourself, you will find the answer because everyone should sit down and be sincere with themselves. So once you have that love, you're going to ask yourself that question. What else? Because love is sacrifice. Love is not this American way. Saying love is how other people should serve me. Love means they should serve me. But you ask yourself that question. I love, I should serve. Because Islam is saying you love, you should be served. You love Allah, be a servant. Because in reality, it is Allah that is giving us everything. Allah is serving us everything. Allah is wadud. Not you. So now you're going to ask yourself, okay, I love. I must serve. How am I going to serve? How am I going to serve? What can I do? You will find that answer. I'm not going to tell you to. If I tell you, you're not going to get too much blessings to. It's like I'm forcing you. Because I'm telling you, I'm giving you all the answers. You must sit down and try to find out. You cannot do anything. For example, here, physically, if you are here, you cannot do anything. Which, <laughs> tell me you cannot do anything. <laughs> tell me there are no billions and billions of things that we are doing here. Persons coming say, I don't know what to do. If your heart is not working, of course you're going to say, yeah, I don't know what to do. You'd but say you cannot do anything. Chef Andy is saying, at least bring a glass of water. Sir, you don't have to serve me. Don't. Serve each other. Serve Allah and His Prophet. Serve our Chef. Serve their work. Serve each other. Be nice to each other. Smile at each other. So many things you can do, people are not doing it. So when you ask yourself that, I must serve, how can I serve? Then you start thinking, your heart starts, then you're building a heart connection that time. Because you're asking, you're building a heart connection. If you're not asking, never you're going to build a heart connection. Because you just sit there expecting for all the answers to come to you. But once you come, or once you start thinking, oh, they're doing this, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to spread the words of Sheriff and how? So many times I get this question, by the way. I'm not putting you down, of course. You are sincere, I know that. So many times people ask this question too. I'm getting it at least once a month. How can I serve this way? How can I serve? Every time I'm saying it over and over again, but really... The activities is only held by a handful of people and that never changes. One woman with four kids is doing the bulk of the work. Taking sohbats and putting it and spreading it. So many of you, <laughs> shame to you, you're not doing it. You have so much time. Or dunya, of course. You have so much technology. You have so much resources and information coming to you. But no, there is one person that is doing that continuously. Every two, three days, putting up a short sohbat from Sheriff Andy, 
putting some pictures, saying this, and sharing it. I'm sure you know, right? Everybody knows who this is, correct? You're seeing it? Not too many there. Once in a while when it strikes you, I see some people putting something small. This up. Majority, that one is doing. And from that, other people are taking and spreading it and translating it. That one doesn't even live here. That one doesn't even see Shah Effendi. Maybe once a year. But when the heart is moving, and that heart is locked there, and saying, I'm not going to drop this for nothing. Say it to me. Huh? You get one kid, two kids. Ah, I don't know what to do. I'm going crazy. Huh? American style. I cannot sleep. Ah. Maybe the women's, they have something. What about the men's? So many of you, you're not married. So don't, so don't tell me I have family, I have bill sticker. No. So, I don't like to say this. Because every time I say, and people still not doing it, more heaviness falls on you. Yes. That's why we don't say. Because you ask and we say, and you don't do it, more heaviness falling on you, more donkey you become. Well, we're seeing, it's not improving. People are still stuck there their own work they're not doing extra work oh forget about it but look to yourself maybe these words will have an effect some way somehow don't do this for me it's not for me it's for the sake of Allah and his prophet you are benefiting not us there's nothing that we can gain by this I'm not asking nothing from you but since you're asking there's something that I can do do it how many people, so many of you, you know how to play computer games. You know how to use all the technology of the computer. But you know how many people there are that's just putting some pictures together or making some video of this. Only a couple of people. Not even a handful. Still it doesn't change. Still those couple of people. So many of you, you know, but you're so busy. Mashallah. I can understand. Now I'm going to wash up, knocking wall to wall, the tourist murids. At least the murids, they're living here. I'm walk, knocking them down. I'm making them to be busy to do so. I can understand that time that they are not doing too many things. It still is no big deal to just copy and paste, really. It's just copy and pasting. Or to sit down and to translate something into your own language. Or to look at Sheriff and his short clip, solve that question and answer, just to listen and to type and then to paste it. Simple. This is, there are millions of things to do, but I'm showing this one. You're not doing it. But the tourist murids, ah. Oh. Then always asking how to build a connection with Sheriff Effendi. How to build a connection to Sheriff Effendi. I'm far away from Sheriff Effendi. I don't live. I cannot come to... How do I build a connection? I'm sick and tired of this question because I'm seeing also some, those that are not here, they're very busy posting other things. Maybe other duas, other tarikats, other things, other things. Good, do it. I'm not stopping you. You can. You can post other things, but... If you're not being busy first with your share, then why are you being busy with others? And what is the intention there? What is the agenda there? Is it to help or to be impressive so that people can be impressed with you? Oh, you know the secret uh, dua. Something. Even if you do that, continue to do it. Something. But have some intelligence, which I believe everyone is very intelligent when it comes to the dunya. Half of the people here, they are doctors. Everyone graduate from college. If you didn't graduate from college, you know how to make thousands of dollars a month, if not a week. Very intelligent when it comes to the dunya. But you don't know. Suddenly everyone is so lost. How I make investment for Ahirat? 
for the blessings. They're so lost. They don't know. So innocent. So donkey. Wake up. We must wake up to ourselves. I keep saying to people, you have a big job ahead. What? What are you waiting for? Big job ahead. Huh? You think you're waiting for the skies to crack open, the earth to split, and some heavenly creatures coming to say, now you've been chosen to do something. That is the big work that is ahead of you. You're not even starting with the work that is right in front of you. That means you take this work lightly. Don't worry, that time will come. I understand a couple of things, inshallah. Fatiha. Last question, say. Bismillah rahman rahim Ayat 186 of Surah Baqarah says that there is no protocol. But why do tariqat say there is protocol? Bismillah rahman rahim uh, This question is from Turkey and I... I Looked up the ayat that reads, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and when my servants ask you concerning me, indeed I am near, I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when he calls upon me. So let Good. them respond to me and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. Good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is closer to us than our jugular vein. Definitely. When we ask the Holy Prophet for help, Who is he going to ask help from? Himself? When we ask the Sahabi Kiram, the Awliya Allah for help, are we asking them from their own energy, from their own maqams, from their own station to help? Where are they getting the help from then? They're getting help from Allah. You taking one ayat and you're saying, well, what about this? But you're not looking at all the other 6,665 ayats. And you're not looking at 1,400 years of tradition in the Ahli Sunnah way, according to the alims, the ulamas, and the awliyaullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, oh, you're putting that ayat? That's why we are not Wahhabis. Because tariqat is for intelligent people, not for Wahhabins. They're going to say, what about this ayat? What about this ayat? Because then definitely... You don't see the intelligence in it. You don't get what I'm trying to say. La ilaha illallah. Does that complete our shahadat? Put hadith and ayats away. They're very basic. All faith rests on a shahadat, isn't it? Is the first pillar of our faith. And the prayers, the fasting, zakat and hajj, it is to protect this shahadat. Is the shahadat complete just saying, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah? Or did it continue with Muhammad Rasulullah? Meaning that to reach to Allah, you have to go through the Prophet. How do you like that? Where are you going to come out now from this? There's so many foolish Muslims now. They're cutting off the Muhammad the Rasulullah. Saying, no, no, no. Only Allah. Wahhabi style. No protocol. What about so many ayats that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying? And we just said, obey Allah and obey His Prophet. Obey Allah and also obey His Prophet. Be obedient to Allah and His Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Obey Allah, obey His Prophet, and obey your rightly guided leaders. Now, how are you going to put those two together now? What are you going to say? Forget about that Surat al-Baqarah. They're quoting from Surat al-Fatiha. To you we worship, and to you we ask for help. Isn't it? And so many Wahhabi kind people, they say, you see, we ask help only from Allah. That means, if you go to a saint, you go to a sheikh, you go to the prophet for help, that is shirk. Because Fatiha is saying, 
to you we worship and to you we ask for help. Ah. And Ayatul Kursi is saying, what is Ayatul Kursi saying? Nothing can help you, isn't it? What is he saying? Nothing can help you except with the permission of Allah. No outside help you're going to ask, you're going to find, except with the permission of Allah. Now, how are you going to put that together when you have so many instances, examples in the life of the Holy Prophet You heard about the hadith of the blind man? Obviously you didn't hear. That's why you're taking some ayats, you take it out of context, out from the original meaning. And Muslims today, they're thinking as if they're the only ones who read the Quran, the only ones in history, 1400 years, who read the Quran. And they understand things that for 1400 years, Muslims are on the wrong path, they never read the Quran. Subhanallah. This is ego, nothing else. The hadith of the blind man, you ever heard of it? No, you didn't. Of course. One man came to the Holy Prophet, he was blind. He asked the Prophet for help. Prophet did not tell him, pray to Allah. In reality, everyone, of course, we are praying to Allah, isn't it? We are asking Allah, isn't it? Who else is there to ask for help? Who does the Prophet ask for help? Isn't it Allah? Awliya Allah, who do they ask for help? Isn't it Allah? If that one that you ask for help and is asking help from someone else other than Allah, of course that is forbidden. But not only are they asking help from Allah, Allah is saying ask help from them. The mushriks. Or the munafiq. They are saying, we love Allah. This is another ayat. And Allah is saying, no. You must, Prophet, Allah is saying to his Prophet, say to them, you claim that you love Allah, but you must love me and follow me for Allah to love you. So now we're going deeper because everyone is asking Allah. But Allah is saying, find the best means to approach me. The best means to approach me. You think Allah is so low and so cheap. You cannot even approach to your boss in your company anytime that you want. Let alone your president or Obama or whoever it is. You think you can just pick up the phone and call and knock on the door and come in and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no protocol. But is Allah nearer to us in our jugular veins? Yes. But we are very far away from Allah. That is why we have to have a protocol. This protocol is not to separate us from Allah. This protocol is to bring us closer to Allah because we are being separated from Allah. We have 70,000 veils between us and Allah. And Allah is saying, although you have these veils, you can come close to me. Hold on tightly to the rope of Allah altogether and do not separate. Come to my Prophet ﷺ. That one, whatever he asks, I will not refuse. Because what is Prophet asking? He ever is asking anything for himself? Huh? Foolish one. Prophet is always asking for his ummah. For who? For us. If he's asking for us, now it's foolish for us to say, no, I don't need Prophet. I'm going to ask Allah directly. It's nothing but this is arrogance. The hadith of the blind man. Yes. The blind man came to Prophet wasalam. His eyes are blind. He's asking for help. Prophet is saying, pray to Allah 
but ask for my sake. And because of the sake of the Holy Prophet, his eyes, they were cured. So it is for the sake of those ones that Allah loves and Allah never refuses anything from them that we go to them. Unless you have reached a high maqam yourself and you become a saint, that Allah is always speaking to you. Like Allah speaks to prophets, eh? Allah is speaking to individuals. At that time, never you're going to ask anything for yourself too. You're going to ask for others. You're going to help others. So yes, Allah it is close to us. We are very far away from Him. We are separated from Him. If you are separated, you're going to find a way to get closer to Him. You have already separated yourself from Allah. But Allah has put so many lines, so many ropes, so many ways to come close to Him. The Ramazan is going to pray for you. You say, why I have to go to Prophet. Why I have to follow a protocol? But the Quran is going to be a shafat for you. If you read the Quran, the Quran on the Day of Judgment, He's going to pray for you to ask Allah on your behalf to pull you out from a hellfire. Quran is going to do that. Ramazan is going to do that. The angels, they are going to do that. But the foolish, stubborn man, knowing that they go to each other, the Wahhabi kind, to say to each other, brother, please pray for me. Ever you see Wahhabis coming to each other, they say, no, 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 no. Don't ask me to pray for you because that is shirk. You must pray only to Allah. Ever you hear that? No. Brother, pray for me. Brother, pray for me. Pray for me, brother. Pray for me, brother. But they never ask the Prophet to pray for them. Because they think the Prophet is dead. Prophet is not dead. If he is dead, which so many Wahhabis, they are saying he is dead, and they bury him, and today still they are planning to blow up his tomb, and they are saying he is completely finished, and it is only Allah. That's why they don't ask the Prophet, because they believe he is dead. They make big monuments for that shaitan, Abdullah, Abdul Wahhab, they make big monuments for that other one. They call Shehul Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. The Shehul Shaitan Ibn Taymiyyah. But they are destroying the houses and the wells and the graves and everything that Holy Prophet has touched and made that holy. And for Tabaruk, for 1400 years, Muslims are going. They destroyed so many masjids. They say Muslims are going there to make a shirk. Shirk will fall on top of your head because you are making the biggest shirk. The biggest shirk is saying, is me and Allah. And Allah must serve me. Just like the eagle. Allah is saying, who are you and who am I? Ego is saying, you are you and I am me. Because if you can say that to the Prophet, you are you and I am me. Why are you not going to say that to Allah? So, so many, there will be sources of shafat. But we just spoke something earlier today. Because so many foolish Muslims, they are even going to accuse the prophets, prophets of committing shirk. Obviously, you don't have too much knowledge. If you don't and you're willing to listen, we have a lot to give. In this short time, this is just tip of the iceberg. We can talk about this subject for months. Because it is an open hadith that on the day of judgment, from Hazrati Adam, Hazrati Nuh, to Hazrati Musa, to Hazrati Isa, all the prophets, they are going to ask Shafat 
to the Holy Prophet They are not going directly to Allah. That mankind will first run to Adam salam because they are in trouble. And they say, please help us, save us. Hey, why? Why they don't run to Allah? You should run to Allah, right? Allah is close to you, isn't it? And ask and he's not going to refuse, right? So, why Prophet is saying on that day, the people, they're running to Prophets? Why Holy Prophet didn't say they should run only to Allah? Of course, that time the Wahhabi is going to say the Prophet is wrong too. <laughs> to you. Yeah. Disgusting. Mankind is going to run to Adam alayhi salam asking, please help us. Pray for us. Adam alayhi salam is saying, I cannot. I myself in need of help because I made a mistake. I ate from the forbidden fruit. And I'm waiting for Ahmad to come. To ask his help, they run to Nuh alayhi salam saying, You are the second father of mankind. We ask for your help. Please, we are in trouble. Help us. Speak to your Lord. You are closer to your Lord than we are. Because everyone will understand how far they are from their Lord that time. Because they can see their sins in front of them. They are separating them from their Lord that time. Everyone is not seeing nothing now. You're thinking, it's just air between us and Allah. Is here. They run to Musa alayhi salam, to Isa alayhi salam. All the prophets mankind is running to, and every one of them is saying, Musa alayhi salam is saying, I am in need of help. I'm not going to go directly to ask Allah because I'm in need of help. I committed a wrong thing. I smacked a man so hard that he died. Isa alayhi salam is going to say, I cannot because I am ashamed before my Lord because my nation, they are calling me the son of Allah and Allah. And I myself in need of help and I need for the Holy Prophet salam, to come. So why they don't run to Allah? The day of judgment, definitely day of judgment, you are closer to Allah than now. Yes, you must ask from Allah, but how you are going to approach Allah, that is, an, that is a very important question. Prophets, they ask from Allah, Awliya Allah, they ask from Allah. How are we going to approach to Allah? And Allah has already given us a clue. Find the best means to approach to me. That is another ayat. But intelligent man is going to see one thing. He's going to look, he's going to understand, and he's going to say, I don't need a million proofs for this. When I see the minaret, I know it is already a masjid. One time, one king size, one wali, one saint, saint scholar. He is saying, I have 100 proofs, 100 proofs to show that Allah exists. And another wali, the way of the heart, saying, send a message to him and said, that is because you have a hundred doubts in your heart. So, this is not the way of arguing, debating, da da da. You may go to madrasas for that. This is tarikat, darga is something else. So, of course, you may ask, but ask things that is going to give you benefit to you and to others. This is important. Inshallah you are sincere and we are answering as much as we can. You don't have to listen to us, definitely. You don't like it, leave it. We are not claiming anything. You don't have to hear anything. We are not scholars. We are following Sahibul Saif. Shaykh Abdul Karim Kabrisi Rabbani. Rabbani. He is Rabbani. And he is guiding us. And we are happy with that and we are happy with our Lord. 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله سي Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Does one need permission to recite the Dalal Hayrat? Yes, I give you permission. If you are murid, you are following Sahibul Sayyid, permission is given. Shaykh Effendi has given permission, then we are repeating it. Permission is given. If you are not uh, from our association, you want to read, I say it's up to you. You're not under any obligation. It's a good thing to read. It is good. Read. It's one of the things that is good for you to read. There are other things that are very heavy. If you ask me the same question, do you need permission to recite Jafshani Kabir, for instance? You know Jafshani Kabir? Who knows here? You know. What is Jafshani Kabir? Say. Sen, söyle. Cevşen-i Kebir, it is a dua that the Ashab al-Badr, they were reading before they go into the battle of Badr. Now, don't go searching so much for these things. That one, you need permission. I'm not giving you permission. No one has permission to read that. It is a very heavy... Shaykh Effendi is not opening it for people. Don't be too smarty once to say, oh, I'm going to look and I'm going to recite this. Okay? There's a recitation. Jeff Shani Kabir is including all 330 names. Oh, there's Hadul Badr also. You read that. This Hadul Badr is something else. Jeff Shani Kabir is something else. You read that. You don't know. You don't have too much permission to read it. It's going to burn you, definitely. People, they want to read Quran. We're saying, okay, read Quran. But you know where people are reading Quran? In the bus. Huh? Quran, to read, you have to wear Islamic clothes. You have to light the incense, yes. Because it gets rid of all the wrong things. And the angels, you're inviting the angels to come. You have to be in wudu. You have to concentrate. You have to read. Because Allah, that time, is speaking to you. But nowadays, people taking the Quran, they're putting it in their back pocket, taking it out, in the subway, in the bus, they're opening it and they're reading it. Reading, 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 reading. Oh, seeing naked woman. Okay, reading, reading, reading. Oh, he's seeing they're lying and they're stealing. They're reading. What benefit are you going to get from that? Now, this is Adam. This is common sense. It cannot be. But if you want to do it, do it anyway. We're not liking it so much, but we cannot stop people from doing it. So even with the Quran, there is a time and there is a place to read it. So, if you are following the adept of these matters, you are going to get the benefit. The idea is to get the blessings of what you are doing. It's not just to do it. Let me tell you, who got the blessings of the Quran? Sultan Osman Ghazi, the founder of the Ottoman dynasty, he could not speak Arabic. He didn't read the Quran. He couldn't read it. But when he was seeing his shah and he was put into a room to say that tomorrow you're going to see your shah and they made him to enter into this room in the dargah and there was a quran karim in that room he spent the whole night standing up he says this is the word of allah this is quran is in this room he says yes then i cannot sit down i cannot lie down I cannot say, oh, today, <laughs> Arabs especially, they're teaching everyone. Now Turks, they're picking up also. They're reading Quran, lying down on their backs, their feet sticking up like this, one on top like this, like this, reading, isn't it? Sitting, standing, putting the Quran on the floor, disrespecting the Quran. That's why this nation is being disrespected. But Sultan Osman Ghazi, he stood up. The whole night he stood up and when he became really heavy, he sat like in prayer on his knees and a heaviness fell on him and he dreamt and he was given the blessing. And in that dream he said, when he met his shah, in the morning the shah looked at him and said, say your dream. 
Sheikh knows. You dream something, say it. And he's saying, oh my Sheikh, last night, as you know, the Quran is in the room, the word of Allah, I could not sleep. I stood up, yes, the Sheikh says, I know. Then when it became too heavy for me, I fell on my knees. And I stayed that way. He says, yes, there was something. Sleep was being put on you for you to get something from it. And he says, tell me your dream. And he says, in my dream, oh my Sheikh, I saw a tree coming up from my chest. It was huge. It was big. The tree was coming out. It was growing, growing, growing until it became so huge. And it was spreading its branches. And I see the whole world underneath that tree. And he says, and I saw the moon falling into my lap. And the Sheikh says, you are going to marry my daughter. That is the moon that fell. You are going to continue the lineage of the Holy Prophet. And the tree that came out from your chest. You are going to be the father, the founder of the most blessed, the most holiest, the most majestic dynasty that the world has ever seen. The Holy Ottoman Empire. And it's going to be so huge, it's going to continue. And the whole world is going to be sheltering under you. Under your dynasty. The blessing came to him because of the respect that he gave. Muslims, why well, respect? They treat that because they started printing it. It starts to become cheap. You can buy Quran in Barnes and Nobles. Putting Quran on the floor, at their feet, and uh, so many things. Yes, these are the forgotten sunnats of the Prophet ﷺ. Forgotten sunnats that Hazrat Mahdi ﷺ is going to bring out. And those Muslims who are not obeying, he's going to take out his sword and he's going to finish it. That's it. Who is preparing for that? We are preparing for Mahdi Salam. Those who are not, who are resisting, they are only preparing for that, yes. That Yamul Furqan, the day of separation, that is in the battle of Badr, there will come a day of separation too. Yamul Furqan, in the future, in the battle between Haq and Batil, the separation is going to happen. Be sure that we are on the side of the Haq. Doubt your faith to be sure that you're in the side of the Haq. Don't take your faith for granted. Say, these are the things that is stopping me from being a true Muslim today, from being a believer today. Doubt that. Then remove those. And our taqwa will increase. Never forget. Don't think that just because you're Naqshibendi. Eh? Oh, you're going to be generals of Mahdi alayhi salam. People have no modesty now. Where you came from? You didn't smell the dirtiness you made sitting on that room, that throne, that everyone is looking for a throne, everyone is saying, I have a maqam. That is your maqam. The dirtiness that you are making, that we are making, that is our maqam. We are eating all the best smelling food, the cleanest food, taking months, years sometimes to prepare. We take it, we put it in our body and it becomes dirty. Ahli Jannat is finished with that. Ahli Jannat, the sweat that comes out from their body is going to smell like roses. Like what happened to Sheikh Fendi Hasrat Ali. Never forget, Sheikh Mavlana gave a very big warning. He says, when that day comes, one third of my murids, they're going to betray me. One third of my murids, they're going to be shahid. And one third of them, they will be Ghazi. They will survive the war and they will continue. May Allah make us to be like our shah, the shahid. Watch out for the enemy. Inshallah Rahman. May Allah forgive me and bless you. May Allah raise the station of our Shaykh higher and higher. And make us to understand and to wake up. Inshallah. For more sincerity to reach to our hearts. El Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum.
Evet. Anything else anyone is saying? Assalamu alaikum. I'll see you soon.